Hi there, Paul here. Uh, a common use case in SharePoint sometimes is filtering documents in document libraries to find them easily. Uh, now, Power Apps opens up some interesting scenarios because we can then load those documents into the mobile phone for field workers to quickly find what they're looking for. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate here related to this is a pattern where we create cascading drop downs using SharePoint as the data source. Uh, here is our data. So I have a document library here, one I prepared earlier. In fact, I used this for an earlier recording with my daughter, Ashley. Uh, but for the purposes of this one, have a look. It's a standard document library. Uh, it does have a folder in, um, but it also has two columns. And this is the important bit. One is called equipment, one is called document type. These are both text columns, by the way. And the idea is we want to be able to create an app where we refine the contents of these documents by choosing a piece of equipment first, and based on the equipment, choosing a document type. And this Power App basically shows it to you. So although it's very simple in conception, if I change um, the equipment from swings to barbecue, uh, suddenly I have the option of choosing a manual or parts. And if I choose those, then that is the document that matches. If I turn around and choose swings, now we have the choice of manual warranty and parts. And so if you have a look back at the data, you can see that we have the whole cascading drop down thing going. By choosing this one, it then gives me these. By choosing this one, it gives you these ones. So how do we do this? Well, let's build an app from scratch. Okay, we have our app. The first thing we need to do is insert a reference to the data source. So under the view menu, we go data sources, add a data source, and I need to connect to that SharePoint document library that I was just showing you earlier. I go down to my SharePoint connectors and in my case I created the site yesterday and it's already listed here. So if I click on flow of the week and we are presented with this list. Now you may not be aware SharePoint document libraries do not get listed by default in Power Apps but that does not preclude you from using them. It is absolutely fine to put in the name of the document library and click connect and you can actually get at it. So we now have a connection to that SharePoint document library. The next step is to go to the insert menu and choose gallery and I'll just choose a vertical gallery, a blank one, and a gallery is going to allow us to look at the content of that document library. Uh, and the way we do that, the very first thing after putting on a gallery is we connect it to the data source that we just made called documents and we've now done it. But because I chose a blank gallery, you see nothing on the screen because we don't have any controls that display data from this library yet. So to rectify that, if I click the edit gallery button and go and insert a label, we now have some data and we are getting um, some interesting content. The reason why some are blank is because the content we're getting is the title property or the title column out of SharePoint. I tend to use this Excel type interface up here. Now title is not what we're interested in. I just uploaded documents, not all of them have a title. So if I change this back to here, I can pick a whole lot of other columns on this library as well as some built-in ones. Like for example, I will always get file name with extension back from SharePoint via Power Apps. So if I change it to this item dot file name with extension, I am seeing all of the content. So it's really easy to get at files and view them in different ways. So first up, now we're going to filter. We want to be able to filter this, but using a cascading dropdown. So let me insert two dropdowns. I'm going to go to the controls menu and go drop down and do it again. So here are our two dropdowns, drop down one and drop down two. And what we want to do is in the first dropdown, we'll just line this up <clears throat> like so. In the first dropdown, we want to actually show the values from the equipment field in here. So we want it to be self-generated. Right? And that's actually pretty easy to do. If we come back to our app, if we come back to our app, um, I can come into this first drop down and you can see the items property is currently set to something called drop down sample, which is some built in data. I can actually change it to other hard coded data if I want to using the array format and you can see that we have A, B and C. But our desire is to make it dynamic. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, if I type in documents, because that's our data source, have you noticed that actually we're getting results, but we're not seeing anything? Well, the reason for that is on this uh, particular control, if I go to the advanced tab over here 
And if you look down to the items property here and the value, it's set to some internal SharePoint ID. Whereas if I change it to um, file name with extension, there is now all of the things. But while that's all interesting and fun, that's actually not what we want to do. We want to get just the unique pieces of equipment from the SharePoint library. So we're going to use a function called distinct and it goes like this distinct we choose our data source which is the document library and the expression is basically um, what you want to make distinct what you want to make unique and in our case it's the column called equipment and you'll find equipment already listed there because we have our data source specified here it knows which data source to use now having done that if we have a look at the result we now have a blank swings and barbecue if we go back to the, that's exactly what you're seeing because we have this folder here, don't forget, blank, swings, barbecue. So let's actually get rid of this folder. We don't want to see it. And to do that, we can make a nice little mod to our app. Okay, now to clear this uh, line out, we need to, I need to make one important point about um, how this is working. And I'm going to do it by making a button really quick. I'm going to put a button onto the screen and I want to show you what the output of that distinct function looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy that bit of code, go to our button and on the on select on this button, I'm going to make a variable set X. I can call it anything I want. And I want X to be the output of that distinct function. So if I press this button now, and if we go into the view menu and we go and look at our variables, we should see a variable called X and it brought, it's a table. So if we go and have a look in here, we can see that the distinct function creates a whole new table and it calls the column, it's a single column table and that column is called result. Now that's important, remember that column name because what we need to do is we only wanna see the non-blank results, right? So I don't need my button anymore, I'll delete it. I'm gonna come back to this drop down, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna filter, the dis the, my source is the distinct function. So remember that brings back a single column table called results. And so I'm gonna basically say not is blank result. And you can see that it automatically found a result for me. Close the bracket and that should be uh, enough with another bracket. Now, if we take a look straight away, you can see now that we've gotten rid of the empty uh, entry. Cool, now let's look at the next one. So now we have this drop down. Now this drop down needs to take whatever we have in here. So we need to filter the documents library by whatever the equipment is. And once we've filtered that, then we wanna do a distinct on the document type. So looking at SharePoint, First, we basically go, of all of this stuff, I only want to see the ones based on the drop down. So for example, let's say that user chosen barbecue, we only have these two. Then we want to run a distinct against the document type column. So back in our app, that looks like this. We go, first up, let's do the first half. We'll go filter. We're going to filter the documents library and we're going to filter it where equipment, the equipment column is equal to whatever is in that first drop down. And that drop down is currently called drop down one dot selected dot value. Okay, but that's not all. That just filters the data we need. But what about the distinct that then gets the specific column? So now I go and wrap a distinct around that. So we go distinct, comma, and this time it's document type. And now that I've done that, you should see the result. If I choose swings or barbecue, we only have two entries. If I choose swings, we now have three. So straight away you can see that is how to achieve a cascading dropdown. And the final step in terms of tying it back to our gallery here is how about this? Let's go to this gallery and now change it and we'll say well, we want to filter, filter this gallery, the items property of the gallery where equipment is equal to drop the first dropdown, dropdown one dot selected dot value okay 
And But then if we want to actually, that's not the whole story, that gets the equipment, but what about the document type? So luckily we can add an additional parameter. In fact, you can add multiple parameters to the filter function. That little dot, dot, dot there suggests that you can keep going. And you notice that us, if I put a comma, it goes, what's the next logical test? So I can say doc type, document type equals drop down to dot selected dot value and with that you should see now we are seeing the true filtering show me the warranties show me the parts let's actually have a look at the parts for the barbecue or the manual cool so there you go okay so here's the little bonus uh, trick that uh, I think is kind of useful to know this drop down here um, at the moment only shows the three distinct values from the document library where the equipment equals swings. But what if I wanted to add the word all, and when we choose all, we actually f we show all the documents for that piece of equipment. Let me show you a quick trick as to how to do that. Um, this involves uh, creating something called a collection. And what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to build out this drop down a little bit differently. If I go to this first drop down, there is an event called on change. Let me go and find the on change. There it is there, on change. So basically every time a value changes in this uh, dropdown, I am going to build or rebuild a collection of document types. So if I use a function called clear collect, clear collect, and I'll just call the this my, my documents, that'll do, my docs, and the collection is made up of the output of that distinct function. So the exact same um, uh, one, basically where we're filtering where the equipment equals this. And we're getting document type. So what we're doing here is we're still, it's that distinct function that built the list of document types below. So what's the effect of this? Well, let me show you. If I change this from swings to barbecue, if I did that correctly, if I now go and look in collections I now have a collection called my docs and you can see there's my manual there's my parts and if I come down now into um, this drop down instead of having this distinct in here I can wipe all of that out and say get the items from my docs from that collection so you can see that that will behave the same way as it did before there's my three go back to barbecue there's my two. So the only difference is we now have a collection in memory which we can control a little bit better. Because check this out, a lot of people don't realize you can do this. Clear collect my docs. Since we know the format of that um, output is a one column table with a column name of result, I can manually insert an extra result. I can go result colon all like this, all, close the quote, put a comma there. And believe it or not, that will now sneakily insert the word all in. Let's prove it. If I come back out and we now go barbecue becomes swings, check it out. All manual warranty parts. Now go back to barbecue, all manual parts. Neat, hey? Okay, so now that we have this working, now let's turn our attention to the gallery because we do have to make a change to the gallery because if the word all is in that drop down, we do not want to filter by document type. There's a couple of different ways of doing this, but the simplest one, I guess, is just to do an outer loop. So if we said, if um, drop down to, which is our document type, if drop down to dot selected dot value is not equal to all, right, then the filter that we're applying is this one. Otherwise, Let's just take a copy of that line, put a comma on the end. Otherwise we'll filter, but we won't bother on filtering on document type. So that, my friends, basically now is a conditional filter in that gallery. And let's have a look. Let's just quickly tr test it. If I choose barbecue swings and we go all, we're seeing all of them. If I choose manual, now we're seeing the manual. If I choose warranty, now we're seeing the warranty. Now if we choose barbecue, barbecue all, we're seeing everything. Let's just look at manual, let's look at parts. 
So there you go, there's a neat little trick so that you can actually um, do quite a bit of powerful stuff with the uh, cascading drop downs by using collections. Hope you found that of value. Please let me know, give us some feedback in the comments, any other videos you'd like me to cover off in particular when it comes to uh, getting the best out of SharePoint with Power Apps. Thank you.